So you've got acid alkali titration calculation sorted. Let's have a look at a redox titration. We're going to do this exactly the same way. It doesn't matter that this doesn't look familiar or that the given equation looks a bit scary because it's ionic. Um, let's see what we've got here. So we're reacting nitrite ions with acidified chlorate 5 ions. They've given us the equation. We know that we have 25 centimeters cubed of sodium nitrite. Okay, so let's put the nitrite over here. Nitrite is NO2 minus, and I have a volume of 25.0 centimeters cubed, and the concentration is unknown. This is what we've been asked to find. Let's have a look at our chlorate ion. We have a bit more information. We have both a volume and a concentration, so we should be able to see immediately that we're going to be able to find the number of moles of chlorate ions. Once we've got the number of moles of something, we're away. Concentration 0.02 mole per decimeter cubed. So I can find the number of moles of chlorate ions because I have both a volume and a concentration. So it's concentration times volume. Um, so we've got a concentration of 0 0.02 times the volume. Remember this needs to be in decimeters, so I'm going to divide it by 1,000. And when I plug that into my calculator, it comes out at 0 0.0054. Eight moles. Okay, so that's what we know about the chlorate ions. The ratio of chlorate ions to nitrate, nitrite ions is 2 to 5. But I don't have two chlorate ions, I've just figured out that I've got 0 0.0548 moles. So, moles of the nitrite ions, I need to scale up. So um, we've got we've got naught point naught 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 five four eight. I'm scaling up, so I am going to multiply by five, divide by two get my ratio right and that comes in at 0.00137 moles. So I now have the number of moles, I've also got a volume so I can figure out the concentration. Concentration equals moles divided by volume. So we've got 0.00137 divided by the volume, the volume is 25 but remember we need to turn that into decimeters, so I'm going to divide that by a thousand, and that comes out at 0 0.0548 mole per decimeter cubed. So I have figured out the concentration of nitrite ions, but if I go back to the question, it wanted the concentration not in moles per decimeter cubed, but in grams per decimeter cubed. So I need to convert my moles into a mass. Okay, we know how to do that straightforward because mass equals number of moles times a molar mass. Now it's the molar mass of sodium nitrite that I'm interested in, not just the nitrite ions. So we need to know at this stage that sodium ions have a single positive charge. It shows us in the equation that nitrite ions have a single negative charge. So the formula of sodium nitrite is going to be NaNO2. This is important because I need to know its molar mass. And when I figure that out, sodium nitrogen plus two oxygens, that comes to 69. So now I can finish off my uh, question here. I have the number of moles. Number of moles is 0 0.0548 times the molar mass is 69. So the mass of that number of moles is 3.78 grams. So the final concentration is going to be 3.78 grams 
per decimeter cubed. Okay, so very straightforward. We're going to figure this through in the same way. I used the information about the chlorate ions to work out the volume and the concentration. Once I had that information, I could work out the number of moles. I then used the ratio here to scale up. Once I had the number of moles of nitrite ions, I could work out the concentration in mole per decimeter cubed. And then the final part here was to turn my moles into a mass. And then I have my final answer, 3.78 grams per decimeter cubed. And finally, I wanted to work through the kind of titration question you get at A-level where you turn over the paper and your heart just sinks. So much information. It looks horribly complicated. Where do we start? First thing, as always, is don't panic. So what I I'm not going to read this through. What I suggest you do is you pause the video, have a good read through. You might want to screenshot the actual exam question because I'm going to break it down. So I'm going to give you a minute to uh, pause, have a good read through. So what information do we need? What information do we already have? Um, we've got a mixture of sodium ethane dioate and ethane dioic acid. And I have been asked to calculate the percentage by mass of sodium ethane dioate in this mixture. They've done two titrations. In the first titration that they have, titrated the ethane dioate ions against um, potassium manganate 7. These ions here have come from both the salt, the sodium ethane dioate, and from the ethane dioic acid dihydrate. In the second titration, this looks to me like um, an acid-base titration, we're titrating it against sodium hydroxide. They've given uh, the equation, which is very nice because it shows us quite clearly that this is a titration where the acid is titrated. Um, so it will be able, from that, we'll be able to find out the number of ethane dioate ions that have come from just the acid in this mixture. So already I'm starting to get my head around what um, I'm going to be able to do. We need to be very clear here that um, both ethane dioate and ethane dioic acid are a source of ethane dioate ions because that, both the equations are ionic. This is something that by the time you get to A level you would know um, or get to the exam. So if we look at the ethane dioic acid dihydrate, God, that's a mouthful, um, H2C2O4.2 h 20 Okay, so in solution, that is going to produce hydrogen ions and it's also going to produce the ethane dioate ion. So C2O4 2 minus plus what we've got here, how many waters? 2H2O. Let's put that back. 2H2O. I know that this has got a double negative charge um, because it's in a compound with two hydrogen ions. Similarly, it's in a compound here with two sodium ions, and sodium has a single positive charge. So that is something, sort of background knowledge, that we should know. OK, so I have split this question into two. Let's have a look at the first titration. What do we know? Let's start with our manganate ions. So for my manganate ions, let's find my pen. Here it is. I have both a concentration, there it is, and a volume. So from that, I can find the number of moles. So number of moles equals concentration times volume. So that's 0 0.02 times my volume. OK, so I've divided my volume here by a 1,000 because I need to turn it from centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed. And when I plug that into my calculator, I find that that gives me 0 0.0053 moles. So let's find out the concentration of ethane dioate ions in our solution. And this is the total number of ethane dioate ions. They've come from both the salt and from the acid. 
So number of moles equals, well, it's a 2 to 5 ratio, so I need to scale up. So it's 5 over 2 times 0.00053. So number of moles, 0.001325. Once again, I'm not doing any rounding up until I get to the very end. How much solution did I use? 25.0 centimetres cubed. So I can now work out the concentration if I wanted to, but I don't in this case. I would actually be more um, useful to know the number of moles in the original solution. All that original solid was made up into a solution of 250 centimetres cubed. I know well, my pen's behaving. I know that the number of moles of um, the ethane dioatines in 25 centimetres cubed. So if I multiply by 10, I know the total number. So the total number of ethane dioatines, C2O4, 2 minus in the solution must be 0 0.01325 moles. Okay, so total number of ions of the ethane diatoms in the solution because that solution of 250 centimetres cubed was made up from the original 1.90 grams of mixture. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the second titration will tell us the number of ethane dioations or number of moles of ethane dioations in the original sample that come only from the acid. So what information have we got here? We had 25 centimetres cubed as a solution titrated with sodium hydroxide. We have both a concentration. We have both a concentration and a volume of sodium hydroxide. Those are, those are our hydroxide ions. So let's start there. Hydroxide ions, the number of moles equals concentration times volume, which equals uh, 0 0.1. And the volume, again, I'm going to divide by 1,000 so that I'm working in decimeters. moles of hydroxide ions. In this case, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, much easier to work with. So I now know the number of moles of the acid. Number of moles of the acid is going to be 0 0.001045 divided by 2. So let me just write that. Moles equals 0 0.0 0.05225. Okay. So once again, this is the number of moles in 25.0 centimetres cubed. So in the original 250 centimetres cubed, the number of moles of acid is 0.00. .00. 5, 2, 2, 5. We're going to have 10 times as much because we have 10 times as much solution. Okay, so now we have all the information we need to finish this calculation. Okay, so let's pull all this together and see what information we have. So if I go back a screen, I know the total number of moles of ethane dioate ions in the 250 centimetres cubed of solution. I also know the number of moles of ethane dioate ions that came from the acid only. So I'm now able to work out how many moles came from the salt. Okay, so total number of moles minus the number of moles of acid will give us the number of moles of the ethane diatoms that came from the sodium salt um, in the mixture. 
So the total number of moles is 0 0.01325. The moles that came from the acid, that was the second titration, 0 0.5225. 0 0.008025 moles. So what is this number? This is the number of ions in the 250 centimeters cubed. Can't write that from the sodium salt. Okay, we've been asked to find the um, percentage by mass. Let's have a look at this formula. So Na2C2O4. If I break that down, that would form two sodium ions, or it's made up from and an ethane dioate ion. Why is this important? Because it gives me my next ratio. It's a one-to-one. -one. So if I know the number of moles of ethane dioate ions, which I do, 0 0.008025, I also know the number of moles of the salt in the original mixture. If I know the number of moles, I can figure out the mass. Okay, so the very last thing that we need to do is to convert our moles into our mass. So the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass, and that's the molar mass of the sodium ethane dioate. Okay, so when you put that in, that would be number of moles 0 0.008025. The molar mass of sodium ethane diode is 134. So the mass is 1.07535 grams. It wants the percentage by mass. So the original, so we had 1.90 grams. So the percentage by mass is going to be 1.07535 over the original amount, 1.90 grams. And that comes out at 56.6%. And once again, I'm rounding that up to um, three significant figures because that is the same as the least precise piece of information that went into the calculation. So, job done.